All right. So last night, outside of the Democratic National Committee headquarters, the DNC HQ, there was a pretty sizable protest of people who came from a bunch of different backgrounds. You had organizations there like the DSA, as well as If Not Now, and uh, Jewish Voices for Peace. So disproportionately, it was Jewish American protesters who were outside of the DNC calling for a ceasefire, which, just as a reminder, is a position that is supported by over 80% of Democrats, obviously a tiny percentage of democratically elected politicians uh, actually support a ceasefire right now. And so they had to go out and they had to do this protest to try to stop the endless bloodshed that is currently happening in Gaza. And um, so this protest started out very peacefully, okay? And we're going to watch this video here that was posted by If Not Now. And you're going to see them singing out here. You're going to see them doing sort of a candlelit vigil. And uh, then we're going to see the police absolutely coming in and uh, brutalizing some of these people. So let's just go ahead and and jump into this video here and then we're going to get into some of the absolutely insane framing of what happened last night from both you know uh, right-wing uh, uh, propagandists and uh, also democratic and republican politicians as well so let's go ahead and watch this video here real quick got thrown. People getting thrown down the stairs. People getting thrown down the stairs. Okay, so, okay, okay listen. This protest, we just saw the beginning of it. We saw what it inevitably turned into. Now, I'm going to contrast this with what is being characterized by some of these right-wing propagandists and Democratic and Republican politicians here in a second. But just know, okay, they were singing they had a candlelit vigil out there. They were obviously, I think many of these people were probably anticipating, maybe even getting arrested on this night uh, for being obstructionist. That's part of this protest here. Obviously, they're blocking, they're blocking the, uh, the front door here. But this escalated, and I want to make this explicitly clear. Because of the police, there was nobody in this group who was trying to break in to the DNC or to cause violence or even property damage to anything or anyone that was on this premise. All right, this violence was started by the police, the Capitol Police, uh, who were basically, I think, trying to in some way show that they're big tough guys now after their dramatic failure on January 6th. Okay, so we have a little bit more information on what exactly happened here from If Not Now, and then we're going to get to the, uh, the framing of all of this. But they say our statement on the incident on the violent police response to our nonviolent protest. They say police injured 90 plus protesters with injuries ranging from being pepper sprayed, dragged by the hair, choked, thrown downstairs as we literally just watched in that video, and punched in the face. Okay, so this is their statement here. I'll link this down below if you want to go check out more of it. Now contrast what we just watched with all of them with their backs to the front door of the DNC, kind of giving a little bit of an indication that they didn't really plan to like storm the DNC and violently assault people. Contrast what we just watched and the violent police outlash against these protesters for standing there and singing to what right-wing propagandists are framing this as. Here from Benny Johnson, he says, breaking pro-Hamas insurrectionists are destroying DNC headquarters. Okay, and he posts some of these pictures here, right? First of all, pro-Hamas. Nobody in this crowd is pro-Hamas. They are calling for a ceasefire. Seems like that would be pretty clear from some of the chants and the songs that were being sung and the t-shirts that they were wearing with massive letters on the front that say ceasefire and other people wearing ones that say not in our name, meaning this is a Jewish person who is saying do not do this in our name, Israel, right? Okay, so, I mean, literally what he's saying right here is contradicted by the very t-shirts and, and what these people are saying on the ground. And then also destroying the DNC headquarters. Nothing was destroyed. There was literally no violence. There was no property damage outside of what the police did. This is how they choose to characterize it, just showing you how shameless they are in their framing of this. We also had this here from uh, Greg Price, another right-wing propagandist. Breaking. Police officers are literally pulling a mob of far-left pro-Hamas lunatics away from the door of the DNC headquarters in DC tonight. All hell has broken loose. 
All hell would not have broken loose if it wasn't for the police dramatically escalating this violence and trying to tear these people away from where they were standing and throwing them down the stairs and pepper spraying them and punching them in the face, okay? This would not have escalated if it wasn't for the police overreaction to this situation. And again, the characterization here, a mob of far left pro-Hamas lunatics, okay, first of all, some of these people may be leftist, some of these people may be liberals, some of these people may be like center-right or whatever the case may be. But to say that this is a far-left mob, when an overwhelming majority of the American people, including Democrats, Independents, and Republicans, including Republicans, support a ceasefire, is just outright delusional, okay? And again, with the pro-Hamas lunatics. So what they're trying to give here is the implication that if you want Israel to stop slaughtering innocent men, women, and children in Gaza right now, and in the West Bank for that matter, then you must love Hamas. You must endorse what they did on October 7th, full-throatedly. There's no middle ground there. There's no nuance there. There's no, you know, calling for a ceasefire or standing up for Palestinian human rights. None of that exists. You're either full-throatedly in support of every single action that Israel takes, or you're on the side of Hamas. That's, that's literally how these people view the world, apparently. But it wasn't just them. We also had this, here from Speaker Mike Johnson. Don't know how long this guy is going to last, but this was the guy who obviously replaced Kevin McCarthy. He said last night, again, pro-Hamas protesters, just completely making this up. I mean, it's amazing, right? This is the country we live in, where some of, not only these right-wing propagandists, but some of the most powerful people in the country, this man is the Speaker of the House, and they can just live willingly, intentionally, in an alternate reality that is completely detached from anything that's actually happening on the ground. You could go around and you could ask every single person who was at that protest last night and say, do you endorse Hamas? Do you endorse what happened on October 7th? And I, I promise you, I would bet everything that I own that not a single one of them would have said, yes, I endorse Hamas. Yes, I approve of what happened on October 7th. None of them would have said that. But they just, they're, they're able to live in this alternate reality and propagate this and spread this in the political realm, in the media realm, all of this, because they just live in this alternate world, right? He said last night, pro-Hamas protesters outside the U.S. Capitol violently attacked the DNC headquarters. It wasn't violent. It was not violent, except for the police violence towards these nonviolent protesters. I condemn this criminal activity, which injured six brave police officers. Okay, why don't you suck them off a little more? Okay, Mike? In the strongest terms, as Americans, we must unite in one voice, etc., etc. We don't need to hear anything else out of this man's mouth. And there was a response here from If Not Now. Again, a Jewish organization. It's outrageous and disturbing that Speaker Johnson is calling our nonviolent protests pro-Hamas and anti-Semitic. We are Jewish. Many of us have loved ones in Israel. We are demonstrating peacefully for a ceasefire and police violently attacked us. Retract this and apologize now. So obviously he's not going to do that. But it's also important to point out here, not only are these Jewish Americans standing up for a ceasefire, you know who else is calling for a ceasefire? Many of the family members of hostages who were taken on October 7th by Hamas who currently live in Israel. They are currently conducting protests, okay, against Benjamin Netanyahu's actions of indiscriminate bombing in Gaza, which has already killed potentially dozens of the hostages that were being held and refusal to negotiate with Hamas to get a hostage exchange or a hostage or prisoner swap with Hamas. Okay, they are out there protesting for a ceasefire. They're out there protesting to get some sort of a deal done. So, even, I mean, these people like Mike Johnson, you know, Benny Johnson, uh, you know, Greg Price, the rest of these guys, including some Democrats that we're going to get to here, they are even acting in opposition to what family members of the actual hostages who are taken by Hamas are asking for right now, which is overwhelmingly, from what I've seen, is a ceasefire, is some sort of a deal to be worked out. So, I mean, it gives you a little bit in, of an insight there, right, in terms of maybe they don't actually want what's best for these hostages, right? Maybe what they actually want is just to full-throatedly support whatever Israel wants to do, regardless of the innocent men, women, and children, including Israeli hostages who are going to be killed as a result of their invasion and their endless bombing campaign inside the Gaza Strip. We also had here, this is a Democratic congressman, Brad Sherman. Okay, let's see where this guy's from. I guess California, 32nd District in California. So here's what he said. This is almost the most ridiculous one that I've seen so far. He said, was just evacuated from the DNC after pro-terrorist, anti-Israel protesters grew violent, pepper spraying police officers and attempting to break into the building. Thankful to the police officers who stopped them and helped me and my colleagues get out safely. Okay, he then went on after this 
to, and I'm not even kidding here, and I don't know why the tweet isn't below, maybe he, d he deleted this after the fact, but he then went on after this to say that these protesters or anybody who supports Palestinians or supports a ceasefire for that matter, okay, that they must want Republicans to win in 2024. That's what he said. Okay, so we have Democratic members of Congress whose selling pitch for 2024 to have Democrats win is to call people who would nominally usually be Democratic voters terrorists and then to scold them when they call out for a ceasefire as the slaughter is happening in Gaza and to say that they are terrorists. Okay, so you expect a winning strategy in 2024 to be, I'm going to call you guys on the left terrorist supporters, pro-Hamas, insurrectionists, whatever you want to say. And then I'm going to turn around and try to browbeat you into voting for us in 2024. Not a great strategy, if you ask me. But again, even just some of the details here. He says, you know, pro-terrorist, anti-Israel, whatever, grew violent, okay? That was not accurate either, right? We saw the police are the ones who grew violent in this situation. And pepper spraying police officers. Who was pepper spraying police officers? We have people on the ground, David Weigel, okay, who was there directly filming all of this. He says, yeah, Sherman is wrong. I was outside the building and saw... U.S. Capitol Police officers spray protesters with pepper spray, not vice versa, okay? We also have pictures of this, as I'm going to get to down here, all right? I mean, this is a picture. Here's the pepper spray that's being deployed, right? You can see a U.S. PC or U.S. Uh, CP uh, uh, officer here who is pepper spraying one of these protesters who was out here. As you have, like, a line of police officers, like, oh, bravely standing against this, you know, peaceful protester, completely unarmed, presumably not even doing anything wrong in this. So maybe the, the injuries that are cited here by the U.S. Capitol Police could have been caused by something like this. Maybe a little bit of like backfire from your own pepper spray. They tweeted this out uh, last night. Tonight, six officers were treated for injuries, oh no, ranging from minor cuts to being pepper sprayed to being punched. One person has been arrested for assault on a police officer. Uh, we appreciate our officers and, uh, you know, we, uh, we we view these protesters as violent and illegal and uh, we protected everybody in this situation. I mean, think about this. We have six police officers being treated for injuries ranging from minor cuts, okay? Minor cuts. I have a, I have a cut right here on my, uh, on my arm, if you guys can see that, from my dog, Leo, okay, we were playing around, and he, he cut me with his nail, right, is that the kind of thing we're talking about here, and, and God, you know, God knows that all of these people most likely got injured by their fellow police officers, or maybe in the process of attacking some of these peaceful protesters, again, pepper spray, pepper spray, what, did, did these protesters, these non-violent, if not now, and Jewish Voices for Peace protesters, were they the ones doing pepper spray? Or was it, you know, your fellow officers here who may have gotten you in the crossfire when you were attacking these protests? I mean, listen, this entire situation, I was watching it sort of like minute by minute last night. Um, it was genuinely infuriating, okay? Not only was this a completely ridiculous uh, uh, response here from these Capitol Police officers, which I do think, you know, in some sense, and I'm not the only one who's made this point, but I do think in some sense, you know, the, the U.S. Capitol Police, right, this is not the Secret Service that shoved me on my ass at the other protests that I went to a couple of uh, weeks ago. You know, these are the people who I think a lot of people hold blame for what happened on January 6th for being weak and, you know, uh, not, not you know, fighting back, I guess, against the January 6th protesters on that day. And so maybe they feel a little bit insecure and they want to uh, violently, you know, backlash or, or violently, uh, you know, lash out at some of the protests like this and, and prove their worth or whatever the case may be. But I mean, if you actually look at what happened on the ground, it's very clear what happened. You had people who were entirely peaceful. Granted, they were blocking the entrance to the DNC HQ. I think that's a valid protest, especially considering the fact that 80% of the Democratic uh, you know, party base supports a ceasefire right now. And so you're doing a fundraiser inside the DNC HQ. Yeah, you should feel uncomfortable. You know what? I mean, these people weren't breaking in. They weren't trying to hurt anybody. They were simply calling for a ceasefire. And if that's enough to make you this uncomfortable, I think maybe it shows that these protests may be working and maybe they're getting to some of these politicians uh, at least a little bit to the, to, to, to the point where they would have to turn around and say that these are basically terrorist sympathizers and that they are, uh, you know, pro Hamas and all that stuff, right? So, um, you know, I think that these protests need to continue happening. Um, I've been to, obviously, a few of them myself, and um, I think they, they need to continue happening because there, there wouldn't be any other reason why some Democrats and, and, you know, including all the way up to Joe Biden and his administration themselves uh, would feel the need to come out and call for things like a humanitarian pause and to say, uh, you know, things about the hospitals needing to be sacred and protected and all of that stuff and sort of behind the scenes, according to the reporting that I've read, 
spread, you know, trying to rein in Israel at least a little bit and to uh, maybe kill like, you know, 80% of the civilians they're currently on, on track to kill right now in Gaza. And so I don't think that they would be willing to go out and, uh, you know, try to pressure Israel on those things if they weren't feeling this kind of heat domestically. And so, you know, again, solidarity with all of these protesters, uh, you know, fuck these cops who completely overreacted and, com you know, assaulted dozens and dozens of these people who were out there trying to make a very valid point. And, um, you know, hopefully it just gets to a boiling point where so many of these politicians feel so uncomfortable supporting what is effectively an ethnic cleansing or a genocide, depending on what you want to call it, and, uh, you know, are forced to change their position. Everyone is saying good politic guy has the best politic. Believe me. No one does it like him. Believe me. Everyone is saying things.